morning, Coach. Homecoming morning. Homecoming week this week. Your team gets to, to battle a UMass team. Let's flip the page on Buffalo and get ready for the Men of Men thoughts on heading into this week. Still preparing. <laughs> There's a lot to prepare for. Um, you know, most people in the area, if not all, remember Coach Brown, uh, defensive coordinator at Michigan, really, really successful, really popular, really good. Um, after a year at Arizona is the head coach for a second stint at uh, University of Massachusetts. And um, <clears throat> he's running his defense, and uh, he runs it really, really well. So there's a lot to work through and, and figure out um, in that way. New offensive coordinator, different than they were last year in that way as well. Um, and uh, really trying to use the quarterback run game, which always adds you know, another tricky element. Um, so we're just in the middle of those preparations now, but, uh, you know, fully expect an enormous battle here on Saturday. So that's kind of my first question, Coach. Does Don Brown's UMass team look completely different than the, we, the one we saw in Amherst a year ago? Uh, I, I'd say so. Yeah, I, I do. Just schematically. They a lot of the same players, they have new players as well, um, but definitely have, you know, different schemes you know, offensively, defensively, and, and special teams as well. Um, how close is Dylan Drummer to coming back? Is he getting closer? Uh, we have our report um, this afternoon. Uh, so he's definitely getting closer, but I don't think it's going to be this week. Chase Klein had 14 <laughs> tackles in that game on Saturday. Can you talk a little bit about why he's been so good at stepping out the football and what he's meant to this defense? You know, for <clears throat> a guy to be voted captain after getting here, in January tells you, I think, so much about, um, you know, his commitment to the team, his relationships with the guys, how productive, you know, he was in spring ball, how hard he works, you know, all of those things. Uh, natural leader for sure. Uh, he's very good. You know, he, you heard him here a few weeks ago and um, the way that he spoke, um, you know, is who he is. He's a very, very intense um, guy and has learned quickly. Um, he's, he's a really good player. I know Jesus is in the room, but could you, could you talk about putting him on scholarship and kind of what that moment has meant for you as well and, and how reliable he's been on the game as a kicker? Yeah, and so we've, in the, in the, I don't know, it's been a while now, but you know, at that position, um, we tell guys that they have to come and, and earn it. Um, and he's done that. So this again, uh, you know, when when we had the the change this winter, um, I just immediately felt okay about our kicking situation. Um, you know, Jesus had been here, you know, all last season and didn't get very many opportunities on game day. But I mean, he's out there, you know, kicking um, all the time and uh, has a great demeanor, confident. Um, guys really like him. He's got a very strong leg. He's accurate, all of those things. And uh, so he was perfect on PATs, you know, through three and now four games and was uh, three for three last week or, yeah. you know, however many days ago that was. Um, and so just thought it was the right time. So <clears throat> I don't know if I've talked about this, but our stack them theme, there's an acronym with that, and the S is to start over. Uh, no matter what happens, you know, the previous day, you get the 24-hour rule, um, and you need that either way. You need that. Um, and then you've got to be able to, to flip the switch and start over. So those are all words on paper. There's things that, you know, that uh, we talk about um, incessantly, I mean, it starts with me. I've got to be able to do that, right? I've got to be able to myself. I can't sit up there in front of the team and say, we got to start over and, you know, at the, you know, off to the side, I'm like, hey, let's have some more love for what we just did, you know? Um, and I can't be, um, say, hey, we're moving on, we're starting over, and then, you know, walk out of the room and hang my head because, you know, we just got beat in our first conference game. Um, 
and so it's difficult to do. That's why stack them is difficult to do. It's why it's our theme. Um, but the first part of it is to start over. Um, and that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. We have to learn from what just happened. I mean, we can't just go on. We've got to make adjustments. We've got to learn. We've got to get better. All of those things. We watch the film. We, we grade the film. We meet about the film. We watch it as units. We watch it, you know, as position groups and take corrective measures, um, you know, and then, then we start preparing, you know, for UMass. Um, no matter what happens the previous week, you better have the same process uh, or you're, I think you're going to be in trouble. Uh, you referenced Dylan Jarvis, but Blake Bogan, he came out of the game last year, was injured. How's, how's he doing? What's, how's yeah, he's not, he's not doing – I mean, he's doing well because he knows who he is and he's got a really deep faith. He, you know, so he, he knows he's going to be okay, but he's, you know, significantly injured. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I haven't studied it before. This is my first time through, but he is super creative, um, out of the box. He has multiple personnel groups that he uses, really despite, to some degree, despite what the offense's personnel groups are. He has multiple personnel groups involving a lot of different people, um, and then he does you know a multitude of things out of those personnel groups, and there's, there's a number of them. There's a number of them. And so there are a ton of different looks to prepare for. Um, and, you know, some of those guys are involved in uh, multiple personnel groups, and some of them are really sort of personnel group specific. You know, so they're getting really good at doing, you know, just those several things out of that personnel group. And so when their number's called, you know, that's what they're going to be doing. Um, and you just don't see that very much. And uh, so very aggressive, very aggressive, um, and, and I think creative. Does that chess match excite you as the guy that calls the offense? You're going up against that, and you're kind of playing this mind game against Don Brown, like kind of trying to... to oh, each of other course. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Um, I mean, <clears throat> it's a challenge. I mean, every week is a challenge. Right. And this is, this is a different puzzle. It's not one where, you know, you can go back and say, well, hey, you know, two years ago we played these guys like this. Let's, let's do that. This, this would be a little bit more, um, you know, clean slate. You know, how are we going to do this? So, yeah, we've been working at it, you know, all last night and today. We'll continue to work today to figure out how we want to uh, attack it. Yeah, he's playing well. Um, <clears throat> I think he's very deserving of being on that. Um, you know, we have scouts who come through, you know, and watch practice all the time in the fall and whatnot. And, you know, I think he's someone that they're definitely, you know, watching closely. Um, and he's, he's playing good football right now. Roops, you want to chime in? Rob, we can't hear you. You got to turn your mic on, Rob. Coach, a uh, concern I've had, and I'm sure you have the same concern from watching last week's team, is lose Alex Merritt up front. Joel uh, Crawford's kind of seems like he gets nicked a lot. And, you know, Nate Bryson gets a couple of sports that you know, lose him, and they kind of inside zone us to death. Up, up front, any, any other bodies that you're looking to see maybe coming here and, you know, kind of trial by fire, try to. I think you're you're asking, do we have more people to play in the interior? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> um, we do have some more some more guys that in the in the interior. You're seeing uh, you know Dexter play more and more. You're seeing uh, uh, Adrian play 
more. And those guys, I think, you know, as the season goes, will end up playing, um, you know, even more. But you're right. I mean, the Alex Merritt, you know, is a is a huge loss, and it's <clears throat> you know, it's very physical uh, inside, very physical, and. Um, so, you know, we've got to try to keep people healthy to, to be able to last throughout the season. Um, and uh, when you lose someone, you know, for the season like an Alex Merritt, you know, it's a, it's a big deal. Rob, you're breaking up. What's that? There you go. Start again on that one. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Actually, downstate this week too. <laughs> uh, you know how, how hard, difficult to win one game it is on Saturday. It's a very difficult task. People need to understand that. You have UMass coming in, a team that's looked upon as one of the, the lower level teams in Division One. But you're no different. How do you make sure your players understand that this is a difficult? It's going to happen on Saturday. I, you know. I mean, that's what we got to be able to do is it's my job, <clears throat> you know, as a head coach is to, to make sure our guys are ready. Um, so I thought we were totally ready last week. I thought we had started. O I know that we did. We did. We started over. We prepared. Um, we just got outplayed um, and outcoached and, you know, outprogrammed all of that stuff last week uh you know i'm i'm always you know self-critical uh look back what could we have done better what could we have done you know differently um i don't think i emphasized early enough the noon kick that might just see like seem like a real small insignificant detail but after playing you know three Saturday evening games, and we're not a morning practice team. I know when we went to Bowling Green last year, I mean, we were incessant about, when, you know, because we had to travel day of the game, and it was a noon kickoff, and it was like, we're going to wake up, and we're going to be awake, and we're going to be ready, and when we get there, it's not going to be sleeping, you know what I mean, all that. And, you know, we came out and, and played great football. We didn't really start – I didn't start doing that until, you know, Friday, you know, with the noon kick. So that's something I think that we could have done, you know, differently or better. But – you know, our preparation, how we handled practice, how we handled staying in Phoenix and spending the night, uh, our Friday evening team meeting, there's a lot of juice and, um, you know, but the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, I got beat, um, you know, and so, <clears throat> um, you know, we can't let Buffalo beat us twice. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's absurd to think, you know, that we wouldn't be, you know, ready, you know, to play again or whatnot. But, uh, you know, got, got to make sure. Um, and uh, I, really, I really don't think it's a case of ever of overlooking anybody. We didn't overlook Buffalo. They, they played harder and coached harder and did a better job on game day than we did. Um, uh, and before I started over with Massachusetts, I'm telling you, I was sick to my stomach about it. So, um, you know, it's a great question. I mean, I, you know, we'll, we'll find out on Saturday, you know, if, how, how well we do. Yeah, you mentioned Chase, uh, Clown. You mentioned Chase, you know, earlier. You know, he was super productive um, um, on on the defense, uh, and thought he had had a, had a really good game. Um, our, I would say our special teams. You know, even though we we had two sort of glaring um, mistakes, the 26 seconds left, we kick off, we missed 
two and then three tackles. They got the ball down for a field goal, which was just a huge momentum play right before the half. And, you know, we returned another one, you know, past the 50 yard line, but had had the fair catch called and so had to bring that one back. You know, outside of that, our special teams played really, really, really well. You know, we just punted the one time and down the ball on the one yard line. I think it was a 62, 63 yard uh, punt. You know, our, our extra points and whatnot were, were clean. Um, brought one back for the kickoff return. Had another one, I think, to the 35 yard line. Um, had a really good field position on with really all of our kickoff returns other than the fair catch at the at the 17 um, and felt good about our kickoff except for the one right before the half so um, I thought that you know although there was some give and take in the totality of the game special teams wise I, I thought uh, we played well there um, you know I think our offensive line um, you know played well again um, I um, think Austin played well, um, did a good job. Uh, Tanner Canoe, um, you know, had another had another really good game. Um, guy, going back to that is like I got to rethink it because I'm into uh, UMass. But you know, there there were there were bright spots. Um, we just, uh, I mean, the offense. We got the ball for the first time with five minutes left in the first quarter, and the score was seven to thirteen. Yeah. I don't know if I've I've ever done that before, where there's been three touchdowns scored and the offense has never taken the field. It was weird, you know. Um, and it was just back and forth all the way through the middle of the third quarter. Uh, that was our first punt. You know, we dropped the the, the glance and then the tip ball on the third down. Um, so we did, we punted and then you know decided not to punt after that to try to, you know, stick with it. So. Um, but yeah, there was there was there was definitely some some bright spots by people. Jake, do you have any questions you want to chime in with for Coach? Yeah, Chris, uh, what you guys have got to do to be able to force more turnovers? Because I know that that's like the one really habit that they were in. Yeah, no, it's a really good question. Um, we work it, you know. Uh, again, all the time, we're not getting the pressure on the quarterback uh, that we need to get. You know, I think it, I think it starts with that. Um, when you start disrupting the quarterback by making a move his feet, by, you know, you can start throwing errant balls, you can get 10 passes, you get overthrows. And so we just haven't had the pressure on the quarterback um, that we need to have. And uh, I think it, that's probably the, the first thing that I would say. You know, in terms of being ball aware, you know, it's not like we're dropping interceptions or that there's the balls on the ground and we're not getting to it or anything like that. Uh, I think it just really starts. I mean, so the awareness I, I, I know is there. Uh, we just haven't created the opportunities, and I, I do think it starts with with pressure on the quarterback. Thanks. Yep. Okay. Thanks. really really relieving I think uh, the best part about it was after I got it and just the response from my teammates and from my coaches um, and how proud they were and you know tell me how hard I've worked and all those things uh, I think that really meant a lot to me getting to uh, hear the news obviously that you are put on scholarship with another one of your teammates who's in the room Jesus um, just tell me about what that was what that was like and So just what it, it's, it is to be able to do that with a teammate, knowing how hard you guys have both worked. 
Yes, I think um, it's very unique because, you know, me and Jesus basically will always have that moment together. So, you know, we can always look back on that and we'll always kind of be uh, interlocked uh, in that moment. So I think that's really cool about it. And it, it kind of just says a lot about, you know, he got put on and it's kind of like everyone in the room got put on because, you know, he, we're all together and all, all those sort of things. So. Yes, I, I called my mom and my dad right after, and um, my mom was going nuts. Uh, she's just a diehard football fan, so she's so in it. And, um, you know, I think it's just really – I'm really blessed to just have a great support system. You know, they've always put their chips all in for me, and, you know, um, anything I needed, they took a chance on me many, many times. So um, kind of just – Having that work out and pay off um, was really um, satisfying. So, what was kind of the discussion on the defensive side of the ball after that game against Buffalo, as far as them putting fifty points on the board? I think you know we just need, as a whole unit, you know there wasn't really any point in fingers. I think we all just took ownership, and you know we just need to play better as a unit. It's not just one guy. It's it's really just everyone can do more, and just we need to be more productive, more disruptive. Um, but, you know, I think what was really reassuring, you know, all the guys, we, we ha like, we're going to figure this out. And, you know, um, so moving forward, you know, I'm super confident as far as us. What, what kind of stuff does you mass do offensively that's going to be a challenge for you guys? Yeah, you know, Coach Creighton talked about it a little bit, but I think this week's a big mental week. Uh, for the defense just because they're very um, unorthodox on offense and not really like anyone else in the MAC as far as what we play. So, you know, talked about the Q run and all that stuff, but um, kind of just as far as a game plan, it will be a big challenge this week mentally. Luke, I know you got started at, at Army, but how did you find yourself at Eastern Michigan? Yeah, so um, Eastern recruited me out of high school, so I already had a pretty good relationship with um, – Coach Nunez, who was here at the time, he was the one who recruited me. But, um, you know, after things at Army didn't work out, um, my brother was here on the team at the time. And so uh, he was one of the first people I reached out to. And then um, we set up a visit, and um, Coach Collette uh, talked to me, and Coach Creighton, and Coach Nethery. And, you know, I just felt really good about this place. And, um, you know, I thought that was something that I was searching for. So really, really fortunate to have ended up in this situation. Thank you. Any other questions for Luke? Appreciate you guys. Yeah, I, I actually didn't expect it. I mean, he started with the prayer, and I was like, well, he normally talks in Spanish to me, and I was like, well, it's kind of normal. But yeah, I mean, after he said it, like, I didn't know how to react. I was speechless. You can see it in the video. I was like, I didn't, I couldn't talk. I couldn't move. So yeah, it was pretty exciting. How is uh, Coach Creighton's Spanish? He's, he's really good, actually. Really? Yeah, he's really good. I've been teaching him some Spanish, but He's actually decent. He can communicate. So. Did he know it before you started teaching him? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because he played in Mexico yeah. against one of my former coaches. So, yeah. What's it like to, to commit to a university without a scholarship, knowing that like you, you really have to earn it? It's a little different position than other spots on the roster that you have to have faith in yourself to come in and prove you can do the job. Does that, does that put a little extra pressure on you? Yeah, especially because I'm from Mexico, it's it's not easy. It's not easy for my parents to actually pay it. It's like I really had to do it. I I told them like we're gonna do this, and I'm gonna get the scholarship. And I had actually had a lot of pressure. I was struggling a lot the first year behind Chad, 
so I had to talk to them, but and they were they fully supported me, so it really like helped me a lot. But yeah, it was it was kind of hard at the first, at the beginning. And, and was Chad able to help you as well as far as developing your your kicking oh, technique and stuff? You both absolutely. Had strong legs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, Chad was my big brother, but he helped me a lot. Not even, not like on the football field. Yeah, he helped me a lot, but also outside football, he really helped me a lot in school and everything. So I'm really thankful for meeting him. What did the Arizona State game do for your confidence to get out there and finally hit a field goal in a game? Oh, I mean, it was, I mean, it was super fun. I mean, I mean, it's not the same kicking PATs. So you see, especially in away games in that stadium against that team first drive like first points in the, of the game and I remember the night before my parents were talking with coach Crater and they were and coach Crater was like it's going to be a game it's going to be a big game for you we're going to need every point so yeah it was it was good it felt really good Yeah, because in the first game, we were moving the ball and we were in third down. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get my first field. And then we got the first down. And I was like, OK, here we go again, another PAT. But it's, I mean, I got my first PAT. So that calmed me down a little bit for my first field goal. Yeah, so I I was going to every kicking camp with calls, and I did really good in the last one, in my senior year. So I got a lot of calls. Well, I got two schools, but Coach Nunez called me, and I was like, I know this guy. Um, like it felt like when I was talking to him, it was a, like a really good place for me. And I mean, I'm really thankful for him to like take the time to recruit me because. You wouldn't like n not everyone would take the time in an international kicker like it's not easy for you to like make that decision did it make it like i, I don't know what your like possibilities were before you came to Easter, but did it make things easier knowing that you came here seeing that there were other other international guys yeah from Mexico, but obviously. yeah it was really easy because i talked to some of them with jake especially with jake julian he was he was a really part of the because I knew they were like bringing uh, Paskey and after that Adrian, so like it felt like it was a good place for me. You like living in Michigan? Yeah. I mean, I don't like the winter, but summer is really good. <laughs> it's not a, it's a really good place to live. At what point did you start kicking a football? Like, how young did you decide? All right, I'm going to try American football. So I played soccer for like 12 years. Then I got bored of it, so I was like, I'm going to try football. And at the beginning, I didn't play as kicker. I was playing as linebacker in Mexico, so, yeah, it's... Crushing a lot of quarterbacks? Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, I, was, I think I was really good. I can show you my highlights, but yeah. So I started playing kicker. I started kicking footballs, like, in my freshman year of high school. And then, like, I got a lot of... I started kicking, and I, like, I saw my potential. I was like, yeah, I'm going to try this. And, the beginning, I wasn't even thinking of coming to America. I was thinking of going to the biggest school in Mexico. Then I got offers from Mexico. Then one of my friends, another kicker, was like, hey, um, there is these kicking camps. You can get scholarships You can in America. And I was like, well, I want to try that. And I talked to my dad, and he was like, yeah, uh, we're going to try this, and you're going to make it. So yeah. Have you talked to Creighton if there are injuries in the linebacking court? Did you want to try that? Oh, or no. Not here, not here. I'm <laughs> yeah, I don't want to try that here. I need to gain a lot of muscles, so no. I, I, I'm probably going to stay kicking footballs. Well, congratulations on your success so far. Thank you, appreciate it.